Hello again and welcome to spooky season! <laughs> if you can't tell, autumn is my absolute favorite season of all and Halloween is my favorite holiday. Today we're going to try something a little bit different and that is doing the Gun Saxoween or Gunny Saxoween collaboration that's hosted by Gwen from Gwen Shenanigans. If you don't know, Gun Sax I'm just going to pronounce it Gunsax for now. Gunsax is a designer, I believe, or fashion brand that really took inspiration from Edwardian styles and was super popular in the 1970s. So we want to kind of take that aesthetic and that style of dress and make it spooky. I'll leave a link down below to a playlist with a lot of other creators interpretations of this one. I love the variety that people went for. I went for a little darker Halloween aesthetic as you can see. I'm giving it away a little bit because I'm wearing the outfit right now but if you are excited or interested to see how this look came together then stick around while I make a spooky gun sex cottage corey type dress for my spooky gun sax dress, I chose this Vogue pattern as the basis for my creation. I decided to spend a little bit of time sketching out my project idea so I'd have a better idea of what I was looking for in the fabric store when I went to pick out what I was going to use for my spooky fabrics. that I knew kind of what I wanted in terms of the styles of fabric that I was looking for, I needed to find a Halloween print fabric for the main body of my dress as well as a lacy fabric for the sleeves. There were many interesting prints, <laughs> Halloween style prints to choose from at the store, but I think I ended up finding the perfect one for the main part of the spooky slash Halloween-y part of the dress and it took me a while to find the right lace but I think in the end I ended up finding exactly what I wanted. The planning and supply stage of this project was done so it was time to get to sewing. So I started with maybe not my most favorite part of the sewing process which is cutting out the pattern pieces as well as the fabric pieces to make this dress. Having finished cutting out all the pieces, it was time to work on the construction of the dress. Also, no, I didn't make a mock-up of this dress, however, I did take the advice that I've gotten in a few of my previous videos, which is to measure the pieces before I cut them out and compare them to my body measurements to see if it would fit. And I think that ended up working out pretty well, and I knew that I wasn't necessarily going for the best fit on this dress, so I was okay with it maybe not being perfect. This pattern called for interfacing in some of the yoke pieces. I could have spent a little bit more time and used sewn-in interfacing, but I just went with the press-on interfacing to save a little bit of time and energy in this project. Good morning, and welcome to the bodice of my gun sack dress. I'm so happy with how this looks. Honestly though, with the stiffness of this cotton, I feel like I didn't need to give it any interfacing, but that's okay. I don't mind at all. I'm so happy with it so far. The next thing that I'm going to do now is work on the sleeves. You might have noticed from my sketches, but I picked this very lacy fabric to make the sleeves out of. I'm not sure if it'll work for stitching with my machine, so I'm gonna have to see. I might have to hand sew the sleeves. I'm hoping my machine can do it, but we'll have to see. I cut off this little scrap though because when I was looking at it, I was thinking, wouldn't it be a nice thing to kind of trim the top of this collar with as well to kind of tie in the sleeves with the collar? I just thought it might look really cute. So 
I might also do that. I feel like this went surprisingly quickly, to be honest. I, I might eat my words though, especially with the sleeves coming up. Oh, I should never say that during a project. <laughs> Let's go work on some sleeves. the sleeves and they look so much better than I had even hoped. I'm so happy with them. This is a project that I feel like I just want to have a little bit of fun. So there are definitely mistakes made in this one more than I would usually allow in a project that I'm making for me to wear. But I decided to not be so uptight about all the mistakes that I'm making and just kind of have a good time with it and not spend so much time unpicking and redoing and just kind of finishing something off to make it feel, I don't know, good and accomplished and can you tell, like I actually really, I love these lacy sleeves. I'm so happy with this. Next thing is the skirt. I already have the big pieces sewn together so now I just need to gather it up and attach it and then it's time for finishing touches like the lace at the neck. The buttons here and here. I currently just have this pin shut so it still needs buttons. Let's just start with the skirt first and see where we end up. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Wait, let me see if I can stand on the couch. And that way you can see the skirt. Do you see the skirt as well? Yeah, you definitely you see the skirt. <laughs> I'm going to look into adding the ruffle. I think the ruffle will look really nice as kind of like an addition to the bottom of this skirt like I had in the original design. Yeah. Okay. In order to make the lovely ruffle for the bottom of this dress, I decided to use my improved ruffler attachment for my 1890s sewing machine. I had tested it out before, but I've never gotten a chance to use it on a project before, so I was very excited to be able to actually implement it for this one. Like my other sewing attachments for this machine, the attachment attaches to the sewing plate rather than the needle and it has an arm that extends up to move the attachment together with the sewing needle as it moves up and down to move the fabric through a little bit quicker than it's fed usually and then that creates the ruffle for the bottom of my dress. buttons for the sleeves and buttons for the front. Let me go through my stash and see what I can find. Here is my lovely button stash. I recently acquired this whole box of vintage buttons in an estate sale haul, which I will be going over in a future video because this wasn't the only thing I got. I got so many amazing things. But let me look through here and see what buttons I can find that work well with this dress. I found these adorable buttons in a stash. They might be a little small, but I love the look of them and I'm hoping they'll work. They have the exact perfect amount that I need, so I'm hoping that these are gonna work for my dress. I finished hand sewing on all of the buttons, which unfortunately I was one button short, so I had one mismatching button on my cuff. It was 
fully complete and I was time to get dressed up and reveal my outfit. So I'm in my car right now and I drove to the place that I really want to reveal my outfit to you all. It's this beautiful spooky Victorian mansion. I knew it was on a main road that led to a highway. What I didn't remember is that it is currently rush hour and it feels like everyone is out on the streets and this is going to be probably the biggest test of my social anxiety ever. So I'm going to take a minute to work up my courage and then hopefully I'll be able to reveal this outfit for you in front of the best spooky house I can. Thank you so much for watching me make my gun saxophone dress. Please do check out the other creators and their versions of this collaboration, and I will see you all again very, very soon for a lot more wonderful videos. Bye.